This is a demonstration of what I term a chimney for starting up these small backpacking type stoves. The idea for this came from my seeing on uh, YouTube and also on the net a relatively new backpacking stove called the Soto Muka 1NP. This is kind of a novel type of stove that, according to the manufacturer, requires no preheating. It has a somewhat elaborate startup scheme. It has a proprietary bottle. And I have seen the video, and it actually is somewhat impressive. But I started thinking maybe there's a way to get around getting a new stove that requires a proprietary bottle uh, using current technology. I thought that one of the problems that people typically have with these stoves is the initial startup, which is typically um, associated with some flare-up type problems and things like that. So I started with the idea of initially a can, that a pop can that I modified so that it actually would fit over this bantam stove that I was demonstrating. This is actually pretty easy to cut out with some heavy duty scissors. This one again is designed primarily for the bantam stove which is somewhat high and uh, this extends far enough down that it will pretty much shield the priming pan which is at a fairly low level. There's another type of modification of a pop can that I use. This one is for the Primus multi-fuel stove and I will have a separate video on that. But This shows that again you have to have typically a modification for these various types of stoves because they have different leg designs, different uh, size chambers and other areas there's no one size fits all modification for this. Now these little pop cans uh, actually work fairly well. They um, are easy to make. They're practically free or are free. They are not real durable and they don't stand up to heat real well. That led me to start thinking about an idea of something that I call a titanium chimney. This is one of the modifications that I made. I have a separate video uh, for the titanium type chimney that is um, for kerosene using the Primus stove. And you can go to that to get some more information on that. This is one of the models. You can see that it's discolored from the high heat that was used in both preheating and secondarily preheating. Once the burner starts, the chimney still stays on for that particular type of startup routine. But it gets very, very hot. In fact, it will glow in the dark. And this coloration is related to the high heat that develops as a result. As you can see, there are some leaves that I developed to think that this would enclose the top when this thing is finally covered over. And when it's extended like this, it actually will wrap around a fuel bottle, whether it's a smaller one like 250 or the larger one like the 600 milliliter bottle. The 600 milliliter diameter is slightly larger than the 350, but this of course being expansile like this can fit around just about anything. So this is why I ended up having, in addition to the fact that the titanium comes as a sheet, so you don't, you don't have a cylinder to start with, so you have to start off with a sheet. So. There's some overlapping tabs here, but this could be, if, if people had the wherewithal to do it, they could have this welded or something like that, spot welded. There are many variations that are possible with this design. Speaking of variations, this is another variation. It's again based on the same idea, but the leaves are closer together. There's much less of an open space, but I found that despite that, the leaves allow quite a lot of the gases from the preheating 
um, portion of this operation to still escape. It's actually worked much, much better than the one I just saw you uh, showed you, but it um, is still not as efficient, believe it or not, as the pop can. That led me to think that perhaps the simplest solution was the best one. So I came up with this, which is actually just basically a small piece of the titanium foil and the um, cutout source for the legs. It has, again, an overlap here that allows the sides to be brought together. And then for the top portion, there is actually just a simple titanium foil piece that I put on top, and that's that, believe it or not, is the design. And that actually works the best of all the methods that I've shown so far. I have now placed uh, approximately 1.7 cc's of denatured alcohol in the priming pan of this uh, bantam stove and I'm now placing the major portion of the chimney around the, the stove and then I will put the the top on once I have this started. I typically have the small notch here for the exhaust gases to come up over the area of the generator. 1.7 cc's is about all this bantam priming pan can hold. I think it'll hold up maybe up to 2 cc's. The bottle, as you can see, is not even connected, and I haven't pumped anything in it yet. The um, amount of fluid in this is actually very, very low, so I'm gonna only put about a few pumps in. The routine that I use for this particular type of uh, startup is somewhat different from what the manufacturers recommend, which is to have quite a lot of pumps in, but I have found that at least with the chimney you want really very little initial pressure in the bottle. Assuming that I can get this off. Now even though the alcohol may burn out fairly quickly, this is not it does not require that this alcohol still be going because much of the heat of the preheating uh, portion of this is actually taken care of by the chimney which contains much of the heat so you're not in such a hurry to get this thing done. I have a graph that I will demonstrate later that shows something of the heat rise and fall characteristics for this particular type of thing. To some extent there's an advantage to being able to let this sit for a while. Now I'll go ahead and remove this And I will start this. Now 
Now you probably can't see this, it's not very, very obvious, but the stove is actually running and this is actually allowing the generator to heat up a little bit more and then once the process is going I start adding more pressure to the bottle to increase the amount of burn capacity and then as the pressure builds up and again there's very little fluid in this bottle you want to make sure that you have the generator well heated up if you hear the thing sputtering like you're doing right now this usually indicates that you don't have the generator as hot as you need it to be one of the things that I have been working with is having the generator heat up secondarily after the initial preheat by leaving the chimney on and I will show what that looks like so that it will eliminate any of this flare up that you see here which is relatively minor but still you should not have any flare up I will now open up the the valve and the stove is now going it's probably something that's not showing up real well on the video but it is operating I tend to keep the the collar and possibly also the chimney on for a period of time in order to get everything pretty much stabilized as far as the heat is concerned it doesn't take long to do this if there's any flare-up it also contains the the flame within the chimney there's no real fire hazard with this because it gets very hot in the generator anyway and the distance between the generator and the fuel bottle is considerable so you don't have to worry you can see that the titanium changes color as the process occurs with the heating up of this thing now I'm going to go ahead and dislodge this I use this device it's called a hemostat but you can use a leatherman tool to do the same thing to remove the collar it gets pretty hot as you might expect now I will increase the the number of pumps to bring this up to full operating temperature and that's pretty much all there is to this portion of the demonstration as you can see there's not much in terms of any exciting flames or anything else it basically starts the stove you use it and now you get ready to turn it off and the turning it off portion is similar to what everybody else has been telling you to do you invert the bottle but what I also do is I elevate the fuel line by elevating the bottle assembly and I keep the tail end of the bottle up so that the feeding tube portion of the pump is well out of the way of any fuel and while there may be very little fuel in this bottle if it was a full bottle or up to the fill line it would still be such that if you if you weren't careful you could have the pickup tube inadvertently still within the liquid the purpose of having the bottle and fuel line elevated is to make sure that all the fluid runs down through the line this is particularly important with kerosene